I mean, I think it's just something he's going to go through for a while. Um, you know, we'll reevaluate tomorrow to see where he's at. Um, could make sense to give him Wednesday off, too, because then he gets Thursday as well. But uh, we'll see how he feels tomorrow. With that off day, do you think about that a little bit more? Yeah, just because of the off day. So um, he said there was some improvement, but it's not exactly where we want it. So we'll wait to see where he is tomorrow. He said he thinks this is something he's probably going to have to manage all season long, being that he's just a year removed from surgery. Do you almost have to tell him, I'm going to sit you these days and not kind of take it out of his hands? Well, I mean, that's, you know, I talk about trying to be proactive and protecting players from themselves and sometimes they frown upon that but I mean that's some of the things that you have to think about that you know because a lot of times when they're going good they don't want to come out um, and then it leads to something to where they you know they start to feel something so I mean you do have to try to be proactive you have to not wait for him to tell you it hurts before you take him out of the lineup yeah I, I mean there has been times I've taken him out you know in, in a sense I sat him a game and we've had some days off that have helped and I mean, I'd just maybe watch a little closer. Did you did you notice anything in his swing or anything that led you? No, no. Um, it was just basically I sat down at the breakfast table, I was just chatting with him and seeing how he was doing, and he just said he was a little sore and um, and um, kind of made me give him a day off yesterday. Not just with Teixeira, but you're going to enter a stretch soon without a lot of off days to yeah. the end of the All-Star break. You have to be careful with pretty much everybody. Yeah, I mean, I'll have to check in on guys. Um, I mean, that's, that's part of the, the tough part of our schedule and, and continue to use everyone and um, just make sure you don't run anyone into the ground or get them hurt. Joe, how did you lose it to be proactive with him to take him out of the lineup considering, you know, the power he's been bringing and not having those run around? Um, you know, at times it's hard, but you can't, you know, you have to think long term always. Um, and, and I try to try to do that. I try to think long term and, you know, sometimes... It can be difficult, but I, you know, I really try to think long term, and it's it's what I do with my relievers as well, and, and all these guys, starting pitchers, and um, you just got to be proactive. John, how were the swings for Beltran? They were good. Um, he was extremely excited today. Um, he'll take tomorrow off, and then he'll uh, take more swings on Thursday. Um, Pineda had a very good day, 28 pitches, two innings. He'll throw again on Sunday. Um, it'll have to basically be an inner squad in a sense, just because Sunday there aren't games, and we want to be able to control his innings to where there are no innings that are too long, and try to build him up some more. You know, get him somewhere between 50 and 60 pitches, hopefully. Um, Sean Kelly threw long toss. Uh, he was good today. I uh, guess long toss. I, I I think again tomorrow and a little flat ground. Hey, Joe, it was a regular bat. And when St. Louis kid on the mound tonight, and a lot of family and friends inside Bush, I know he's pretty jacked up for this start. He's probably got a lot of jitters. Yeah, I mean, you, you try to watch early to see, make sure he's controlling his emotions. Um, sometimes hard to come and play at home um, if you haven't done it, and it's probably the first time he's ever done it in a sense. So I watch closely early on. Do you say anything to him? No, no. I don't want to put any bad thoughts in his head, so... Um, you know, I would expect him to be excited, and I don't think really anything that I could say at this point is going to keep him from being excited. Uh, when you talk about Beltron Thursday, is that tea and toss, or is that just? I'm not sure exactly. I, I think it is a little tea and toss. Yeah, my favorite. I haven't had to talk much about that this year. <laughs> and with Pineda, when you say 50 to 60 pitches, is that until he goes out on a rehab assignment, or what? You said you want to build him up to about 50 to 60 pitches. His next outing. We'll just his next outing. Yeah, okay. we'll build him up. Um, just because you can control the innings. Um, uh, you know, if the inning gets too long, you just stop it. That's the great thing about those, you know, the, either the extended spring games or an inner squad. It's just easier to control. So is it just building up right now? Yeah, I mean, that's what we need to do. So if he's at 50 or 60, and then after that, you can go Let's just let's let him get to 50 or 60 the first time. Usually in spring training, you only up go like 15 to 20, but since he has some innings under his belt, and he was, you know, he didn't go that long without throwing, we'll go a little bit more. But let's just get to this one and see where we end up. And then we'll probably have a rehab, and then we'll see where we're at. So you think uh, Derek should be starting shortstop for the All-Star game? I would love to see it. I would. Um, I think he's played extremely well. I know the young man in Ramirez has played extremely well in Chicago, too. Um, but um, I understand he's third in votes, and that's a great thing. Third, I mean, on overall votes. Right. <coughs>
It's a great thing. He's meant a ton to this game. Joe, he's gone through a long stretch right now, playing wise. Are you just basically aiming towards that off day? Yeah. Or? Okay. I'm checking with him every day. Um, I checked with him before yesterday's game. I checked this 12 o'clock today with him. Said he feels good, so um, I gave him a DH day in that. And uh, even though we had a day game, and there's usually a little more time between a day game and a night game, it didn't really work out that way yesterday. But he said he was good. Like the North been a pretty exhausting stretch for everybody with the extra inning game and, and the day yeah, night, like you said. So. But uh, he said he feels good, and um, and we'll run him out there. Joe said a couple times he plays till it hurts. Do you want your players not to have that approach? I mean. Where he just I don't. Until he can't play. I don't know many players who don't do that. I well, mean, you're back from injury like that. He, 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 still, I mean, that's what we do. We want to play, um, and uh, players usually don't want to sit down if they're playing well and and everything feels good. They don't want to sit down. So, and, and some, and I imagine with him, it, it, it could be the effects of playing extra in games. It could be one swing. So it's you know it's hard to predict when it's gonna possibly act up, and it's just something we have to deal with. Does, does, does the Mark experience in any way make you think about Derek? Because he's coming off an injury too? Yeah. Um, but Derek's <laughs> surgery was a little bit longer. He's further removed from it in a sense. So, um, But obviously I've been proactive with him and sometimes not to his enjoyment. <laughs> With Teixeira, are you even a little bit more cautious even knowing that you don't have Beltran in the lineup right now? He's another big switch hitter in your lineup. Do you be even more? Are you more capable? No, I, I think maybe you're a little bit more cautious because you have Thursday off more than anything. You mentioned your couple guys in your bullpen weren't available last night. How's your bullpen holding up with all the innings? And You know, they've, they've done a really good job. Um, sorry. Oh, I thought that was your foot. Um, they've done a good job. We've done a good job of giving them days when they need days. Um, and, and the thing that we came into the year with were multiple inning guys. We, we weren't really a one inning seventh, eighth, and ninth. We knew we weren't that. Um, so our guys are used to throwing multiple innings. Um, you, know, you look at a guy like Dylan Matanzas, this is what he did all, all year last year when he was in relief. So our bullpen's in pretty good shape. Um, I know we've had a couple extra inning games, but um, we're okay. Are you concerned at all about with Dylan? You mentioned last night, you know, not wanting to kill him. Um, yeah, I mean, his, his workload is very similar to what he's done before, but I think I'm very cognizant of his workload and how we're using him. And, and yesterday we were in a situation where I wasn't sure if I could get two innings out of him. I wanted to try to. We were in an interesting place in the lineup, so it just didn't, and I didn't have Adam Warren, so it worked out a little bit different. But I watch all the relievers. I'm very careful with the pitches they throw because we want them year after year after year. Joe, two innings, 29 pitches. You stay away from him tonight? Yeah, there's probably not a good chance he's pitching. His, his stuff Unless is, he's going to throw left-handed. His stuff has stayed the same, too, with the workload? Yeah, I mean, it's to me, it's getting better. Um, you know, I, 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 I so, I mean, I love what we see from him. I'll have to check. Will it always be Kelly Johnson if Teixeira is not in the lineup, or would you rotate anyone else there in at first base? Well, I mean, you might think if, if there's a left-hander, you might use somebody else. I mean, you could use Brendan Ryan, obviously. Um, but, uh, you know, I don't think Texas is going to be out that long. We're going to see a bunch of right-handers in a row here, so I don't foresee it being anyone different.